Janis Bergs, thank you for joining us. Um, you know, you and I met through Professor Vicki Lane at the University of Colorado last year because I was supposed to be at a business school reunion in September uh, in Riga, Latvia, and it was going to be hosted by one of my classmates. So I'll give a shout out to Nikolai Adamovich, who lives and works in Riga. And uh, you've had an opportunity to meet him via email, and you'll meet him in person maybe later this year. But you and I uh, had lunch together for the first time in January, and I've just enjoyed your company so much. So thank you for, for being with me today. And thank you, John, for inviting me today and also for that lunch back in January. You're very welcome. You know, I'm glad that you are outside today because it really highlights this beautiful Colorado weather that we're having. So I see beautiful green trees in the background and a lovely day today. So it's a perfect day to do it. Yeah. You came here five years ago for business reasons. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, uh, about uh, six years ago, I sold my company in, in Latvia and that was IT company. We did accounting, payroll, such kind of uh, boring stuff. <laughs> I, spent, I spent with that company about 10 years yeah. and I was a little bit bored of accountants, you know, and bean counters and so on. And honestly, also I got a good deal uh, from a new buyer that was a big Norwegian company. So yes. I was related. I spent about one year uh, with Norwegians and my brother, he is running a staff company I work for now. It's more engineering, uh, wireless telecommunications uh, company. We yes. invent and produce products. And he needed someone in States. And he said, Yanis, you know, maybe it's time for you to go over and look after our SAF's uh, North American branch office. And I was thinking like, you know, I've started like a three companies in Latvia. I've sold them over 20 year period of time. And do I really want to start fourth company in Latvia or I want to try something new? And of course, uh, I thought it's like a lifetime opportunity for me. Somebody will pay for my education and for training <laughs> and uh, I'll got to try, you know. Yeah, yeah. And you've enjoyed it so far to, to have been here almost six years. Um, are you going to continue to stay for a while or what, what are your future plans? Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely stay for a while. I just recently bought a nice house uh, in Denver and uh, probably I won't stay forever. Eventually I'll move back to Latvia at some point. Yes. Uh, but uh, it's definitely that time has not come yet. I think my mission is not completed here in yeah. the United States. Well, you know, certainly we, uh, we've had a wrench thrown in the works as we say with COVID in 2020 and, you know, so your plan in heading back in July will be this first international trip. My business school reunion has been uh, postponed. So you and I'll have to visit uh, in Latvia in sometime in the future to be determined. Yeah. We, we are having a little bit of technical difficulty. We've had a challenge this morning with uh, connecting, but I think we're okay right now. So let's uh, continue. Yeah, you know, you, sure. you and I are similar also in that uh, I have three daughters and a son, and you're blessed with two daughters and a son. Your daughters live in Latvia, and your son just graduated uh, from school in Los Angeles is, and is headed here to Colorado. Yes, uh, that's right. Kind of, uh, he he had a plan to graduate and then try his luck in a movie industry as he is in the photography and filmmaking and his graduation work is about bees, about environmental uh, subjects. And I, I enjoyed uh, his, uh, his movie, but uh, eventually uh, now everything is quite locked down. So he thinks uh, he might also 
do his remote remote work uh, out of uh, Denver, out of Colorado here. And as we are moving uh, to Latvia for a while, probably it will be like three months, maybe half a year uh, until we are back. Then he will at least look after our house. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Well, I, you know, as a volunteer for the Telluride Film Festival for many years now, I've really, um, really seen the importance of documentary films. You know, uh, Ken Burns is an annual participant at that particular film festival, and I'm sure your son looks to Ken Burns as a real hero in that arena. So I look forward to meeting your son and, when he's here and uh, also to seeing his film. Sure. I will send you, John, uh, a link to Vimeo, Vimeo link to his film. Yeah. And I'll be really interested to hear what do you think about it. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, can you talk a little bit about your company in greater detail? I mean, uh, you pronounce SAF as SAF is how you yes. refer to this company. Yes. And so if you could share with me a little bit about the company in more detail, that would be much appreciated. Yes, uh, we are engineering company. By core, we are a bunch of radio engineers who love inventing things and making uh, products uh, for people and companies. I just uh, took a little brochure so you see uh, yeah. how, how my company is uh, pronounced or how it stands for super high frequencies in Latvian language. So it's super okay. Augustus frequency. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and, and history is very funny. A founder and still biggest uh, shareholder of our company uh, did this lip counts and he still works and he's he head of our R&D. Uh, back in Soviet times, he was living countryside and he asked uh, telco monopoly for a phone line. He wanted to have a phone line uh, in his home and uh, he got a he got a proposal that according to our, you know, big plans and in Soviet Union, everything was planned well ahead, you know, long time ahead. So he said, uh, he, he got a proposal after 20 years, you will have a phone line in your home. And he got very angry by that proposal, but he had a friend living across the river and he had a phone line. And what did this did? He made a wireless uh, phone cord extender across the river. And uh, eventually there were many people in Latvia who didn't have phone at that time, but had the friends and neighbors uh, having one. And, and that's how SAF started, with mm. uh, not having, with a need actually. And nowadays what we do, our main product, I don't know, you see these parabolic antennas and boxes. So it's all about uh, data transmission from for different applications. Probably the largest one is mobile operators and the cell towers. And uh, But there are zillions of different applications for utility companies, for public safety, for uh, financial companies doing uh, high frequency trading. So we are into that world. Yes. You were traveling a fair amount before COVID. W were you not? Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was, I was, I was traveling all the time. One reason why I kind of said yes to that opportunity to go over and uh, run North American subsidiary, having responsibility for Actually, SAF is selling to 130 countries. So almost everywhere are our links and antennas and products. And I'm, in, I, I'm, I'm having two hats. Uh, one hat is this North American subsidiary where I'm president of SAF North America. And another is uh, a VP of sales and marketing. So my responsibility is everywhere. And, and, and that's a big advantage too, because we have... Uh, uh, resellers, partners, customers, almost everywhere. So when I travel somewhere, I will always find uh, someone having business with us. So yeah. it's a big, big, big advantage. So what have you experienced traveling the United States? You came to Colorado. Colorado, with 5.4 million people, Latvia is just under 2 million people in size. What was that experience like for you and also traveling? over the last almost six years? 
I'd, I'd, I'd say generally moving from Latvia to United States was like being a big fish in a small pond because I was fairly well known in Latvia and still am yes as a guy doing some business somewhere and 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 here i am a very tiny fish in a very big uh, big pound so mm -hmm. that's probably the biggest difference but of course yeah. also market is uh, so and uh, such a big market here right so many so many opportunities and and, and then it's like being a kid in a candy shop you know you see all these <laughs> candies you want to taste them all but you know you must be much more focused yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you, like me, also lived in the B2B world, and you s were kind enough to send me a product, and maybe you can tell our audience about this, in an attempt to break into the consumer marketplace. Can you talk a little bit about this product? Yeah, I can talk a little bit. I can... <laughs> Uh, I must go inside then and uh, bring my. By the way, what 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 are measurements? Uh, what can we see? Uh, Nine nine hundred and sixty three parts per million of CO two. Yeah, that means that actually um, CO two concentration in your apartment is approaching dangerously uh, high level. It's not dangerous, but still, like one thousand ppm of CO two in uh, air. It's uh, kind of not good. Yes. It would be better to have around 600, 700, something like that. Normal outside there, CO2 level is about 340, 350, something like that. You're yeah, it's an air quality. The window. It's <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, talking about Aranet 4, and, and that's another kind of uh, product line that. Uh, SAF, my company is doing different yes. type of wireless sensors. You know, here mm -hmm. you can see maybe more all, all these devices. Uh, so we recently went into IoT business, meaning uh, environmental monitoring devices that uh, uh, collects different type of uh, information like a temperature or CO2 level or soil moisture like a big vertical for us is everything around greenhouses and uh, growing some things. And uh, then I help to analyze that data and uh, hopefully improve your yields if you are growing something or your well-being if you are measuring air quality in your bedroom. And especially nowadays in a COVID time, that's especially important, fresh air, you know. Yeah. Yeah, IoT or the Internet of Things is a huge opportunity, and you know, it would appear that your company has tremendous opportunity going forward. Yes, of course, we are learning how to sell that stuff. Right. You know, we are coming from the world where one radio link costs like ten thousand bucks, or even maybe fifty thousand bucks. So it's an expensive stuff, and yes. IoT is less expensive stuff, like like an average order size. Uh, for end customer would be maybe five hundred dollars, maybe thousand dollars. So it a little bit changes of how we must uh, set up our uh, sales operations in order to be uh, efficient. But of course, that's such a deep market. That's such a such a deep market, uh, measuring everything around you. Yeah. How, how many employees does your company have worldwide? We are a small company. We have about two hundred. And uh, here in the United States, we have, uh, I think, 15. Mm -hmm. So basic, basically, we have a fairly large warehouse here in Denver where we import our staff and then we send it all over the United States. And we have, of course, uh, marketing a function here, uh, sales guys, technical support. So more, more or less, we can take good care for mm -hmm. our customers. Mm -hmm. You said uh, you felt like a kid in a candy store, given the opportunity in the United States pre-COVID. And uh, certainly, we're all trying to figure out what life will be like during and, and after this pandemic. Uh, yeah. have you, do you have any glimpse of what, how long this will last and um, what plans you have for the future? 
of course of course i can say you that probably covid is not going away until there is a good vaccine and a good medicine to treat it even if we see some numbers decreasing it's probably because of that you know physical distancing yes. and that people are meeting less and there are no big concerts uh, no big events where many people gather together. So probably it will be for a while uh, until all that is invented and manufactured in sufficient quantities. Now, we are blessed in a way of being in a communication business. You see, we are talking with you now in Zoom and we are complaining that connection is not so good. Speeds yeah. are down. And that happens because people work from homes. So there is more need for bandwidth, more Zooms, more video conferencing, and all these virtual things. So we, we manufacture stuff that is needed, that is powering this virtual world. So I think we will live more in a virtual world for a while. <laughs> and uh, and I, I guess... Uh, I guess somehow we will learn we will learn to function. I think big changes will happen in education. Suddenly everybody learned that you actually don't need to go so often to classes. You can you can learn and have very high quality interactions from your homes. Of course you will always need labs and you will always need you know these physical places to come in. But right. still, a lot, a lot of learning can happen uh, from homes. Telework. One thing: when I moved to US, I was right. surprised how many people here are working from homes. Already right. five years ago, a lot of people work from home offices. Not in Latvia. In Latvia, it was like all that, a little bit Soviet culture or something like you know, employers would not trust their employees that they would really work. Right. if they are allowed to work from home offices uh, and, and so on. Uh, and now it's in a couple of months time, half of Latvia works from home. And I don't think that many of them will return to offices. It's yeah. just so much maybe more enjoyable if you have all these country houses, you know, nice places where you can work from. You know, I saw an interview of the CEO of a large financial institution on Bloomberg just a couple of weeks ago, and he was asked, you know, in January, if someone said to you, 90% of your employees would be working from home, would you ever have guessed that? And he said, not in a million years. So uh, here we are, we're doing it. And he didn't have a choice but to trust his employees, to keep his organization going. And, and so I think uh, our world has changed profoundly and forever. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know how long if that the correct word forever maybe in a two three years it will be already like a distant pa past what's happening now we really don't know yeah it, but uh, but i also have a feeling that at least SAF and what we did is of course we moved all our non-manufacturing employees of course the ones the guys that are kind of putting together or radios working in our factories they should come to work otherwise product can't happen but but all like accountants all my sales team all my marketing teams they are working from home and honestly i think we are more productive yes i think I we are so more productive too. compared so, and, and the biggest difference is that each meeting should be better planned in order to happen it. You know, of course, I have my weekly such meeting and my weekly such meeting. And I know I have to plan in advance and everyone should come better prepared. But yes. uh, as, as a result, I think it runs uh, more efficiently, more smoothly. You know, in the conversations that we've had, it, it, it feels to me like you come from a, from a family of entrepreneurs. But then you reminded me that until 1990, Latvia was part of the Soviet Union and, and, um, and things changed very dramatically for you. Mm -hmm. What was it like growing up in the Soviet Union? And uh, I'm talking about your educational system, your family, and what were things like for you? I think they were pretty un unimaginable for an uh, average American. 
because you in your lifetime have always had a you know green dollar and the system was is pretty much the same as it was uh, in 70s or even 50s or maybe even uh, 1900 of course it's evolving and technology and uh, social uh, things are changing but much more slowly yes. but uh, in my lifetime i have experienced the soviet union which was one totally different system and it uh, crashed and disappeared very rapidly no yes. one could imagine that it can happen so fast mm -hmm. and uh, then we had uh, independence of latvia like it was a renewal of independence as, as a country latvia is established in 1918 and it was doing pretty well before second world war it was independent country yes. good standard of living good culture arts everything was occupied and it was under soviet union and of course when i was like 16 18 years old it was 86 88 soviet union was already having gorbachev and perestroika and kind of things were changing it was not as oppressive and as bad as it used to be when my parents were young and were really like you know latvian calendar is full of black dates it's kind of remembrance of something bad happening and two of these black dates are in 1940 when a lot of latvians were just put in a train carts and sent to siberia and then the second wave came in 49 so what what stalin did he took all kind of entrepreneurial people cultural i would say elite maybe is the right word is he took an old elite and everybody who was close to that elite and just sent to die in siberia mm -hmm. and he said that will be the way how we will create a new generation you know mm -hmm. new people young people educated in a communist uh, system and uh, and that's it but even that didn't work so well eventually yeah. <laughs> people returned and so on. And, and and i'm coming from family where my grandfather lived all his life in canada yes he moved during second world war uh, he after um, <clears throat> after war ended he was in germany and then he emigrated to canada and uh, when he was allowed to travel it was i think uh, early 70s he started to travel he started to visit us maybe once a year or once per two years and my uh, my grandmother who was his uh, wife she tried many times to reunite family and to go move to canada but uh, never successfully never they were never allowed to go uh, anywhere and then my father when he was 18 he tried to cross soviet union border and uh, go to canada to his father's side but he was caught he was going in Karelia to Finland and he lost his legs and his fingers and because of cold he froze it so kind frostbite of, yes 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 exactly and he was caught and he was put in jail for trying to cross the border mm. but it was relatively mild sentence so he served I think two years yes. in Soviet prison but after my family was not regarded as a politically uh, trustworthy so we were never allowed to go outside soviet union before it crashed so mm. for me first time i ever saw uh, any other countries and soviet union was uh, 89 mm -hmm. and when, when when i visited my grandfather in in canada it's a tiny town called red deer it's in the mountains between uh, uh, Calgary and uh, Edmonton. Mm -hmm. Well, he was bringing information back to you about the the West and his experiences. I, 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 I would say every Latvian at that time was listening uh, Voice of America and Radio Free Europe. Of course, yes. there were a special, uh, how to say. Uh, uh, it, it's not coming back me into English, but Soviets were trying to disrupt these radio transmissions with, mm. uh, with you know, special. Uh, I, 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 I don't have, have right word. Uh, 
uh, to me coming back. But still, it was possible to listen. It was a little bit dangerous, but at the same time, everybody uh, were listening to these radios and uh, got information from there. Uh, that was one. Second was, of course, Western music that was somehow coming in. And third was, uh, like, there are about 100,000 uh, Latvian Americans uh, in the United States, about 100,000. So right. such a huge number of people. So almost every Latvian family have someone, had someone also in Soviet times uh, living abroad and sometimes visiting them, sometimes just uh, sending letters and so on. You know, you might have lived in a less than optimal environment in your youth, but I, this I know about you, Giannis, you're an extremely well-educated man. You have great educational foundation. And so the system at least served you well there, that you and your family, uh, you got your needs met in terms of education, which, was, which is so vitally important to all of us and our futures. Is that a I first I, 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 I think for Soviets, education was somehow uh, important. All yeah. that kind of, every children should be able to read. Education is important. That was a part of that ideology, um, yes. education. But then, uh, yeah, I attended, uh, I attended the school in Riga, which was kind of uh, in mathematics and physics. So kind of, uh, I, 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 I have strong this mathematics background. And then I studied radio engineering. Uh, my first degree is actually what I'm doing now with the radios is uh, what I studied um, in university, in Riga Technical University. And uh, then I went into business. It was already after Soviet Union, first years of independent Latvia. I started uh, uh, to uh, sell computers, went into IT business. And at some point I felt that uh, I also need a business education. And, and that's, uh, I started, I, I studied uh, one of first North American style uh, MBA programs in Latvia at Riga Business School. So it yeah. was in English language. So I learned a little bit English during these studies and maybe some management ideas and so on. And also re the reason why uh, Vicky suggested you to talk with me was that uh, when I moved to Denver and I was thinking, I, I, I know nobody here. I don't know anybody here. So I need some kind of contact. And uh, I was, uh, while in Latvia, I was uh, teaching a little bit at Riga Business School Entrepreneurship. That was one of my hobby jobs. And I just went to Riga Business School to director of school. And I said, maybe you can send some emails introducing me to business school in Denver. And then we found there is this Jake Japs uh, Center of Entrepreneurship at uh, CU Denver Business School. And that's how I kind of started uh, to interact a little bit with the educational community here too. I think if you move to new place, then uh, like university or business school is a good starting point where you can meet an interesting people, get some connections and somehow move, you know. I had the pleasure of meeting her. She attended a lunch meeting uh, with my uh, Denver Rotary Club when the CEO of Children's Hospital Colorado spoke. And, uh, you know, she, she's just a delight. And I hope uh, to have the opportunity to visit with her again. But you reminded me also where your background is in engineering and mathematics, your wife excels in languages, does she not? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think it's good because we have a diverse, uh, <laughs> diverse background. Yes, my wife translates, translates from a French language. She's a translator and she translates a fiction books. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. From, Fre from, from French to Latvian. And yeah. uh, that's, of course, uh, <laughs> that is good because she can work from anywhere. She's yeah. not tied to any location. Yes. And I didn't realize that it was fiction. So that's wonderful that uh, she does that. And, and then she can stay engaged and employed uh, here in the United States. Yes, actually our last meaningful uh, vacation uh, was to Martinique. Uh, Martinique so is a French, 
French island. Yes. And we managed to go there early February, stay for two weeks. We went back like late February and it was just literally a couple of weeks before all lock lockdown started. So it's we still talk that <laughs> we still talk that we are still still discussing that that's probably the best thing we did this year that we've managed to <laughs> go there. That's wonderful. What other things have I not asked you that I should know, do you think, about you as an individual, your business, about Latvia as a country? Um, what will I, you know, what, what kinds of things have I missed in this discussion? Mm. No, of course, we could talk about very many things, but uh, what is important for me, uh, one is uh, a year ago when when we were organizing the Spotlight Latvia conference here in Denver, which you missed, but uh, you learned from Lani about, uh, from Vicky about this uh, uh, event. Then uh, one of my ideas, what I'm trying to accomplish is, I am trying to help more Latvian companies uh, to start doing business here in the United States. And of course, for Latvians, it's easy in Europe because we have European Union, which means basically same currency, uh, no borders. Uh, no, of course, now there are borders because of pandemics, but still it's kind of easy, easy to do business. I, I want to help more Latvians uh, to do something here in the United States because mm -hmm. I think, uh, and uh, how Latvian companies are different, I think one is that, uh, product quality and design is some, something kind of, of, of good quality or high quality. Yes. Uh, and uh, we are, and we are, do, and, and Latvians like to do things that last, like kind of, you know, not something that you will throw away next year, yes. but even for our radios, like we give five year warranty, no one else in industry does that because we are building the stuff that will last. Mm -hmm. You will not have to throw it away. Mm. And I think there is a, there definitely should be demand for such kind of uh, uh, products. Well, you've experienced good success here. Your business has grown in the United States. And, you know, I think COVID will be an interruption, but you'll be back on track again soon. Yes. Uh, no, I'm sure about that. Because one thing what is good for about the United States is if you really work hard and do kind of right things, eventually you will be successful. I think, I think the system in the United States rewards hard work. You know, I don't want to take a deep dive into politics, but I do want to say this, that, you know, over the years I've heard speakers um, often say to us in the United States that democracy is fragile and we need to care for it and protect it. Do you feel that as you see us go through the struggles that we've experienced here uh, in 2020? Do, do you see democracy as, as fragile as some would say, or do you think our system is strong enough to withstand uh, the, the challenges? Uh, I, 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 I think that it remains to be seen. And of course, the biggest, uh, biggest challenge for every democracy is a peaceful transfer of power. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's the most important thing. And that's why I think United States can be proud that for all these years, transfer of power always has been peaceful. And I think that's the main, main characteristic of uh, democracy. So I hope that uh, it stays the same and uh, for long, long years, United States has been like this, uh, how you say, beacon of freedom or whatever, but uh, all the oppressed nations and kind of source of authority of United States came from this democracy and freedom ideas. And, and uh, for the past five years, I feel that it is somehow going away, that it's somehow not anymore like it used to be. and. Uh, this causes also certain loss of uh, uh, certain loss of authority of United States uh, worldwide. At least I don't know how it looks for you from inside, but when I'm looking from outside, 
I see that that authority is going away. It is fading and I feel very sad about that. And I hope that this is just a temporary uh, thing happening. Right. But of course, United States has been in a history like at some moments more inward looking, like looking on internal problems and not so much interested of what's going outside, like before Second World War for a while, and then very much international oriented and uh, kind of trying to uh, trying to export democracy uh, worldwide and everywhere. So I assume current moment is more like this inward looking moment, coping with internal problems. But I still hope that uh, <laughs> I still hope that United States will turn outside eventually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. without United States, uh, without that, Latvia would never be free country. Mm -hmm. uh, the only reason why, and actually, of course, Baltic countries were first separated from Soviet Union because of United States and no free world country ever recognized occupation of uh, Baltic countries. So during all post Second World War, there were embassies of Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia in Washington. And there were governments in exile. And the United States never recognized Latvia as being part of Soviet Union. And that's why we regained our independence. Actually, it was possible to regain our independence uh, in a way how it happened. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's so complex. You, you know, the metaphor of a fabric uh, works for me, and we touched upon our educational system. I can see, for example, that our higher educational system is ripe for disruption right now, separate and apart from democracy. Uh, I think uh, we're going to see some real changes that, that um, higher education is one of the things that attracted people like you here to the United States. It's one of the or like, or, or like my son, for example. There you go. And, you know, he wanted to study here and has yeah. benefited from that. Yeah. Is there anything else that I may have missed that you want to talk about before we bring this to a close? What, what could be that, John? I, I want to say this to you, Giannis, that getting to know you this past year has been a gift and that we are so fortunate, even though you're a visitor right now in the United States over the past between five and six years, we're so lucky to have you here. You contribute uh, to our society and to business and uh, getting to know you has been a real pleasure. And I hope this friendship continues as we go forward. And then, you know, you and I'll meet in uh, Latvia someday in the future, and uh, I'll get to meet your family and, and to see the business that you work for. And I I'm so looking forward to that. Thank you so much, John. All right. Thank you. Thanks for this time together, and I'll, I'll bring it to a close. All right. Bye for now. Bye. I hope that quality will be is good enough for for our conversation. I think it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs>